Well, again, Tim Spector of the Zoe COVID study. We've got questions today on long COVID and vaccination and transmissibility. And a whole series of questions have come in on this topic. And we've got one from Anna who says, to what extent does vaccination help to prevent long COVID? And another one asks, do vaccines reduce your risk of long COVID? And finally, on the same topic, if you've been double vaccinated, what are your chances of getting long COVID when you come into contact with someone with COVID symptoms as is still very likely after July the 19th. So putting them all together, the short answer is yes, vaccination absolutely does help against long COVID. And it does this in three ways. The first is that the vaccines themselves reduce dramatically your risk of getting infected in any way or showing symptoms. And we think this reduces it by about 85%. So about a one in six less chance of getting uh, infected in the first place. And even if you do get it, you're unlucky to get it. As some people do are still getting COVID. Uh, around 15,000 a day are still getting it with, with vaccinations. If you've been double vaccinated, our latest research is suggesting that it's still reduced, then reduced further at that stage. So we're going to be publishing our data and, and put some hard numbers on that shortly and we'll point you to, to those links uh, when they come out. And importantly, the third point is that everyone who uh, gets infected after a vaccine is going to get milder disease with these uh, cold-like symptoms rather than those classical ones that really uh, damaged the, the chest and left people really debilitated. So this is three great reasons to make sure you get double vaccinated as soon as possible if you want to reduce, reduce your chances of getting this nasty form of long COVID. Our next question is on vaccines and the immune system. And this one is from someone anonymous who's asking how effective is the vaccine if you've had both jabs for those of us with a compromised immune system? And is there some form of test that can tell whether they're going to work or not? This is a great question. And there are many people in, in your situation who have uh, immune systems that are what we call compromised or suppressed. And often because they have diseases such as liver disease, kidney disease, or some cancers, and they might be on immunosuppressive treatment, having autoimmune diseases, and there's many drugs that are used to treat those that um, can suppress the immune system. So it's important to understand this. So first, are they safe for this group? And in general, they are safe because these are not live viruses, which wouldn't be as safe the Moderna, the Pfizer, the AstraZeneca uh, are not live and therefore don't have those normal uh, worries about them. Some experts are concerned that if you have very severe uh, immunosuppression uh, in a very bad state, which is perhaps a few percent of the people, uh, then there might be some risks. But for the vast majority, over 99 percent of people, uh, it should be uh, safe. In terms of the effectiveness of the vaccines, we don't have hard data, but most experts that we've talked to believe they will offer some level of protection, but we can't yet put numbers on whether it's as high as in uh, people with normal immune systems or, or not. We really don't know. So it's just a gut feeling that they probably do work. We're going to have to wait until the results of the Octave uh, clinical trial is out. And this is a large study which followed up people with a range of different uh, immune compromised disorders and on drugs to see whether they were protected more or less than uh, other people. We'll keep you up to date when we hear the results of that trial. 
And if you want to go into the subject a bit more depth about your particular disease, try looking at the webinar we ran a few months ago uh, where we had a panel of experts talking about this, this issue. And I think most of this conversation starts uh, just after about 38 minutes. So have a look at that and you might also look at the blog uh, we've got. So we'll keep you posted on, on this important topic. Thank you. Got a question on vaccines and transmission. This one's from Jane, who asks, as vaccines work by triggering our immune response, how does a vaccinated population still at risk of uh, transmitting this protect an immunosuppressed individual? And it's a great question, but I'm not sure we have a, a conclusive answer as yet, Jane. Um, but within the scientific community, it's widely believed that if uh, you've had a previous infection or a vaccination, that is pretty protective against reinfection. And this means that this will reduce, but not completely stop transmission of the virus again. So we are seeing breakthrough infections in people who've been vaccinated and this is like six to ten times lower than people without the vaccine and we know that the amount of virus in those people is actually less if you've had a vaccine so there's less virus to go around but nevertheless it's still likely that some of it will uh, be transmissible so clearly the standard methods of preventing it spreading uh, distance, hygiene and masks, etc., will still have an effect. So you can't completely eliminate the possibility of transmission, but everything we're doing now is going to really reduce it uh, a lot. And so the dose transmitted will also be much lower and therefore any effects will be much milder. When we get any harder data on this, uh, we'll let you know. Keep asking these questions. We're happy to answer them. There's some great ones coming up. And if you like this, do uh, press the like button and click yes for notifications and subscribe to the Zoe channel when something new comes up. Thanks for your support.